People Are Alike All Over stars a young Roddy McDowell and is based on the 1952 short story Brothers Beyond the Void by Paul W. Fairman. There are some changes that Rod Serling made in this adaptation, but most of the basics are seemingly intact. In the production order, this episode was made very close to Third from the Sun and used most of the same sets, to the point where it was kind of distracting, honestly. This was also the third and final episode that aired, directed by Mitchell Lysen. It isn't a bad one and has a classic twist at the end, but the 16mm Shrine is by far this director's best episode. As for People Are Alike All Over, it feels a little thin to fill up an entire 25 minutes, but the core idea and moral of the story, if you want to call it that, fits the show's brand very well. Two astronauts named Sam Conrad and Warren Markison look on at a rocket they are to take off in the next morning. Markison is very optimistic and hopes to meet an intelligent form of life when they get to their destination, Mars. People are alike all over, he says, no matter where humanoid life can exist. Conrad is much more skittish and fears meeting life on the Red Planet. The next day, they are jettisoned from Earth and on their way. Unfortunately, they travel 35 million miles to have a very rough landing. The ship is heavily damaged and Markison is fatally wounded. Conrad is unharmed and tries to help his colleague, but Markison wants to see the planet before he dies. Sam refuses to open the door, fearing what or who is on the other side. Warren then succumbs to his wounds before the door is opened from the outside. Conrad is shocked to see people, humans, waiting for him. These Martians have psychic abilities and seem good-natured. He has an especially pleasant connection with a female named Tinya who reassures him. They offer to help Barry Markison, repair the ship, and give Conrad a familiar place to stay the following day. Using images from Sam's mind, the house they build for him is a perfect recreation of one from Earth. Sam Conrad feels right at home, but things may not be as perfect as he thinks. It's cool seeing Roddy McDowell here, and he does a decent job as the innocent, frightened Sam Conrad. Some of his line deliveries are a little on the nose, but it feels like that was more the writing than his acting. I also can't help but hear the Mad Hatter in a few scenes. Will you tell the others how very appreciative I am? I, I was so frightened. Actually, the prototype isn't quite ready yet. Paul Comey was fine in his smaller role as Marcuson, and Susan Oliver played her part as Tina passably, but the MVP of this episode is Vic Perrin as one of the male Martians. His constant affectionate looks to his bromance buddy will win your heart. The toga type things they got going on for the Martians feel a bit off, but I guess they're supposed to be presented as a more advanced society, which means they dress like John Belushi in Animal House. I will say I like the spaceship footage and transition they used from the surface of Mars to the mangled interior of Conrad's rocket. Those shots and that set were supposedly from this season's favorite movie, say it with me, Forbidden Planet. Anyway, I really liked how the spaceship interior was set up after the crash. The slanted position of everything made it all feel more tangible, and how it was shot made that scene look great. Conrad enjoys his new home for a while before realizing there are no windows or ways to escape the locked house. A wall then opens to reveal a group of Martians on the outside looking in at him through bars. Sam notices a sign that reads Earth Creature in his native habitat. He's in a zoo! As a guilty looking Tina leaves, Conrad is left with a disturbing irony. Marcuson, you are right! People are alike everywhere. This ending was foreshadowed at the beginning, when we see both Conrad and Marcuson looking through a fence at the rocket. A rocket that would take one to his death, and the other to life as a living exhibit. Overall, this episode was okay, nothing all that special or must-see about it. The theme of people will always be awful no matter where they exist in the universe feels similar to other Rod Serling scripts. I can see why he was attracted to the short story. Martians may not look like humans or wear togas, but who knows? Maybe they do, in the Twilight Zone.